Okay, hi. Um, just briefly, uh, what is Stitch and Story? Now, I've found over time that I like to use children's books um, for my sketchbooks. And so these are just a couple of quick examples. Um, not a lot of work as such done in a lot of them, but I've, this is just my sketchbooks where I put ideas for particular classes. So you can see I've took aspects from a page and printed it and worked into it. Um, picked colours from a page and made fabric swatches and applied that to the page. Embroidered samples and integrated them into the page and cut out areas of the page and worked within those areas. And again here, added work to a page that lives with the page that works from the page okay you can see at the back there the cut out areas from the previous page and this is another one um, I've worked into the page I've stitched into a page here painted on it stitched into it added little samples added images of my own work I put doodles in um, torn paper added that to them more images of my own work more stitch added to the page, layering up fabrics and images and pieces of paper within a children's book. I don't think I've missed anything there. Um, again, adding work to pages. So I want to do a class. These have been created in response to other things, okay? So this class, everything is gonna be worked in response to the children's book. So it's kind of like throwing it around a bit. Um, so I bought myself a children's book, I already have this book in hardback and I bought it in softback. Now you'll notice with these ones that there's fixed spines so they can be quite tricky to work from at the back. So say for example, let's say I wanted to work on this page here with a cut out, okay then I would have to kind of like fold it like that to get that page independent to cut it away or I would have to have some kind of mat under there and cut it that way. So I found over time that the best ledgers and sketchbooks to use for things like that to give you more flexibility are spiral bound ones because they open out completely flat allowing you to work independently on pages and so you can do that. So I had this, this was a, a fixed spine. I took it to a, a place, like a workshop, where they trimmed the spine off and put a spiral binding in for me. Now I know that not everybody can do that, not everybody has access to that kind of thing. So after a suggestion from a friend, which I'm very grateful for, that I hadn't thought about, perhaps if your children's book wasn't spiral bound, you could carefully trim the pages out, okay, and then use a hole punch and put them in a ring binder. That might be a way of working with it if that's what you wanted to do. So it was just a quick video to explain to you about the spiral binding, but also to say that whereas that book and that book, the sampling in there has been in response to other things What's going to happen with this book is the book is going to dictate the response. So I may, for example, take the first page, not the title page. Right, I'm loving all this, buttons and beads. So maybe the first thing I'll do is embroider some buttons on fabric, cut a bit of the paper out and put the buttons behind. Or I might draw some buttons on the page over the top of these. I might trace some buttons and lay a tracing over there. Um, all these things will be fed by that page. And then separately, it's not going to be completely, always, totally working in this book. So say I did that button page and it inspired me to embroider a surface of cloth to use on the front of a pillow or a pocket or a bag or something, then I would then embroider on cloth as well separately from the book. So it's going to be about the book as a starting point and as a record, a place to keep your evidence, like creating a mini library of ideas, but also about taking those ideas forward into stitched pieces, okay? So it's not just going to be about the book um, because I know that might put some of you off. Um, 
so that was just a quick heads up a quick video about what's going to be happening in the class stitch and story i think that's what it's called i haven't even decided what it's called yet i'm making this before i've decided but it's going to be something like that okay i hope that clarifies a few things